Hello, I'm Sarandis Michalopoulos from Euractiv and we are in the European Parliament today to talk with two MEPs about organic, organic farming in Europe. Dr. Molly Scott Cato is from the Greens European Free Alliance Group and Mr. Jan Hui Tema is from the ALDE Group and both are leading MEPs on agricultural issues. Thank you for joining us. Organic plays an increasing role in EU agriculture. There is also an ongoing trial of negotiation on organic regulation review among the Parliament, the Commission and the Member States. The outcome of this negotiation will be crucial for the future of the organic farming sector and uh, that's why Euractive has gathered questions from relevant stakeholders and our two guest MEPs will try to provide answers regarding the current state of play. Um, let me start with you, uh, Dr. Molly, um, with a general question. Uh, how do you see the current state of play uh, of organic farming in the EU? Well, as you know, the farming sector in general is facing great difficulties because prices are under pressure and farmers are really facing difficulties just maintaining their livelihoods. But organic is a ray of light in this scenario because we've seen great expansion. Organic agriculture has expanded five times over the past two decades and farmers can get a premium price for their organic production. So to me, it's a, it's a ray of hope in an otherwise pretty dark picture. Mr. Hidama? Well, um, me, myself, I'm a dairy farmer in the Netherlands. Uh, during the week I'm here in Brussels to talk with you, for example, and I'm in the meetings. And in the weekend I milk the cows back home. And uh, I see some friends of mine, they converted to organic. They did it sometimes 10 years ago, 5 years ago. But indeed, you're right, the price of organic uh, products are higher at the moment. So some are more tendent to convert to organic at this moment. Okay, now converting to organic farming seems to be a huge challenge. Uh, we have a question from IFOAM, uh, which represents uh, EU organic farmers. Industrial farming causes a lot of damage for the environment in terms of loss of biodiversity, water pollution or soil degradation. So how to ensure that these costs are taken into account and how to make sure that farmers who provide benefits for the environment and for society are compensated? I think it's, it's a really interesting question because what's involved in that question is this understanding that actually organic agriculture is much better for the environment. And organic agriculture is based on the fact that you have healthy soils and the soil provides the nutrients to the plants. Whereas with chemical farming, it's actually the chemicals themselves that provide those nutrients and so you can manage with much poorer soil. Now good soil is actually good in terms of holding water back, preventing flooding, also capturing carbon which is important in terms of the climate crisis. So there are all those benefits benefits that come from organic agriculture and we believe farmers should be well rewarded for those benefits. So we would like to see higher rates of return in the cap payments to provide a financial incentive for farmers to continue with this environmentally beneficial form of agriculture. Mr. Wizema, what's your opinion about this challenge? Well, it's an interesting question indeed and uh, there I disagree as well. I see that in organic compared to conventional, that at some points indeed organic is better, but a lot of aspects, uh, conventional, intensive and uh, modern agriculture is much more sustainable than organic. If you look to the ecological footprint per kilogram of product, a um, conventional farm is producing, they use less water. For example, in intensive farms in the Netherlands, we produce only six liters of water per kilogram of, kil per kilogram of tomatoes. In other parts of the European Union, we use 60 liters of water. On CO2 emissions as well, per kilogram of product that intensive farming are using, they produce less um, greenhouse gases. And the most striking one is land use. We produce 25 times less land than organic. And with land you can preserve biodiversity for example, but you can use it as a carbon sink for CO2 as well. So um, I think we should have an open discussion on what's sustainable or not. And I believe we can learn from organic to use natural processes, for example, soil quality. Um, but on the other way around, organic can learn for conventional farming or new, techni new technologies, um, digital uh, of Internet of Things, digital data, uh, maybe also the use of robots, sensor techniques. So um, we should have an open discussion about it. There is no silver bullet. Uh, we mm -hmm. should learn from each other. Uh, Mr. Huitema mentioned uh, the use of land and uh, the organic farming, the, the organically cultivated areas right now in the EU represent this, the 5.7% the, the of the agricultural land. At the same time, the demand is constantly growing. We have a question from uh, AgriBrussels uh, platform. 
Uh, which tools could we improve to facilitate access to the land? Well, if I can first address uh, Jan's point about the use of land, I mean, this was quite surprising figures he gave. I mean, even the most conservative estimates suggest that organic agriculture can produce 80% as much on the same amount of land as, as chemical farming. And um, actually, the problem with, with productivity is much more about food waste. I mean, about 40% of the food is actually, that, that's produced is actually wasted. So, to me, that's, that's a more important thing to emphasize than you know actually over intensively using the land and actually destroying the soil in the process but in terms of encouraging more um, uh, more organics I think the key there is absolutely in the common agricultural policy and providing the right financial incentives so you re reward the farmers who are do who are engaged in the sort of farming that's good for nature and actually organic farming does produce um, you know an environment that's 34 percent richer in terms of biodiversity than conventional farming okay a couple of things that I would like to highlight in, in that respect indeed. Indeed, food waste is an important thing. I started an own initiative report and we're tackling food waste. But um, nevertheless, what of our higher demand in the world, we still have to look to the ecological footprint of per kilogram of food that we produce. So then you can have a fair fair compensation and doesn't matter uh, what the demand for food is. And if you look to the ecological footprint of agriculture and conventional and organic, organic has to produce 87% of conventional to keep up with the ecological footprint on CO2, on biodiversity, on the use of water. And um, so Mrs. Scott mentioned 80%, that's not on 87 yet. And I really doubt if 80% is the right figure in, in that sense. And why can conventional play such an important role in biodiversity? I agree with her that on an organic farm there can be more biodiversity, but it's mainly species that are very generalistic and opportunistic that can survive on land that will be, will be farmed as well if it's organic or conventional. But a lot of species in the world we should not touch upon at all. So we should leave it even with organic farming. So if we can spare out land, if we don't have to use so much land, we can use that land for conserving nature that there is real biodiversity, real species that are not disturbed by any form of agriculture. You mentioned before the role of the new common agricultural policy for the period 2014 and 2020. And um, what, what do you, th you think, you mentioned the financial incentives, but what do you think should be its role in increasing um, uh, the organic production? We have a question from uh, iPhone. What can be done to ensure that organic farming is better prioritized in existing support schemes and promotional policies to ensure that the whole value chain is developed? Well, I think farmers already see themselves as custodians of nature and, um, you know, that should be encouraged. And I absolutely support giving subsidies to farmers, but I think it's important that they provide social and environmental benefits in return. That's the kind of deal we're doing. And at the moment we have some payments through the cap that just go to income support for farmers and some which are attached to greening measures. And uh, the Greens think that all the money should be shifted towards the pillar that's about providing social and environmental benefits benefits. So, you know, we need to respect the fact that organic agriculture provides all the benefits I've said already in terms of climate change, in terms of flooding, in terms of allowing, for example, pollinators, you know, not putting pressure on bee populations, which is also important for agricultural production. So all of those incredible benefits that organic farmers can provide should be rewarded much more strongly through the cap payments. And if they were given financial incentives, then this would encourage more people to move into organic agriculture and it would meet the demand and make sure that farmers had a, a premium price and it would help their livelihoods as well. Let me insist on that. Uh, do you think that um, the ongoing, uh, let's say, simplification of green measures of uh, the new cap uh, lead us toward this direction that you just well, described? you know, one person's simplification is another, word's compl another person's complication. That's the trouble. Everybody thinks what they want is, is simple. But I think, um, you know, the people who I represent who are not farmers, and I do represent a lot of farmers, but the people who are not farmers really are asking, what do I get in return for the money that I pay for farmers? And they do need to make sure that farmers are providing those benefits and that we are monitoring that as well. Mr. Huidema. Well, that's a fair, fair, a fair point, of course. It's taxpayers' money. We should explain how we spend it. Um, I think we should focus what is the goal of the cap. And uh, my understanding, all the understanding is that we find to, to um, help to be having a competitive and sustainable EU agriculture. I think that's 
everybody agrees with that. But how to do so? And there I see indeed some problems with the cap at the moment. That it's not so much goal oriented, but a lot of the measures. And what I see in the Netherlands, for example, that some farmers, for example, on birds, they want to have more birds in their pasture. They can only get subsidies if they fulfill a whole checklist of measures they have to fulfill. Some farmers are doing that and some meadow birds are not coming back. But neighbor uh, doesn't want to fill in the checklist because say this doesn't make any sense. I do it my own way. It's full of meadow birds, but he doesn't get the mm -hmm. subsidies. So I think two things, it's very important. We should focus on indicators, how to measure sustainability. That's the whole discussion, what I tried to say that we should not focus on the form of agriculture, not on the form of agriculture, that's an, a non-issue uh, discussion. We should focus on what is sustainability or not and try to measure it. And that can be done by conventional or organic, doesn't matter for me. Um, so the cap should orient much more on the goals that we want to achieve. And uh, in the long run, I hope that EU agriculture can get the money much more from the market and we should have a discussion on is tax based money should we pay tax based money for environmental measures that we can't mm -hmm. take out of the market would you like to add something on that yeah i just wanted to say about the checklist i mean you can go into all sorts of incredibly intense um, monitoring processes through ticking boxes and so on exactly. but to me the simplest way of achieving greening is to make sure there's a lot more organic agriculture because that is the greenest way of farming well, and that is something I don't agree, and that should be stupid. Um, we did, we have seen it before that biofuels was the silver bullet for climate change. Mm -hmm. Well, there you see intention that now the opinion is completely different. We should look to the facts and not about the gut feeling. And I believe organic farming has a lot of gut feeling uh, in it. Look to the facts. Well, on that point, it would be good if there was more research into organic farming because there's ten times as much money spent on researching biotech as there is organic. So, you know, I'm happy to have some more money if you're if you're agreeable to that, Do and then we can know more well, about the effects yeah, of organic. It's it's a, it's a good point in this as well. What I mentioned in my report too, that we should focus on the natural process and use the natural process in the benefit of agriculture. And uh, a lot of farmers in the Netherlands, if it's conventional or organic, they're using, of course, the natural processes, and they see they don't want to deplete their soil. No, they want to have a good soil quality because they have a better production and they have a less leakage of nutrients. So uh, indeed, I, I completely agree with you that we should look to the biological, the agroecological, the natural processes and try to find uh, solutions for that. But that's, that said, we also have to focus to biotechnology and other techniques because with that combination we can make multiple steps in a sustainable farm. Now, um, taking into account the link between agriculture and uh, environmental protection, BirdLife Europe asks, do you believe that cutting subsidies for harmful farming practices could be a solution to create a level um, playing field for sustainable practices? Well, I mean, I think I've already made clear that, that to me the answer is incentivizing organic production. Consumers have made clear that they want organic food. Farmers can get a good price for it. So what we need to do is encourage that form of agriculture. It will help farm livelihoods and it will also automatically help nature because it's a more nature-friendly way of farming. Two things. I think uh, we have to inform the consumers better and uh, listen to science and uh, don't pick one specific form of agriculture but look to the goals that we want to achieve and uh, secondly uh, on the level playing field thing yeah that's, that applies the same like we uh, agreed on a lot of goals that we want to achieve also in the environment uh, we should focus that the member states implement indeed the legislation and that all the member states put in the same effort to reach that goals. Uh, you, you said that uh, we have to listen to the science. Yes. Would you like to elaborate on that? Well, um, focus for example how to compare what is sustainability. So try to find indicators in what is sustainability and one of the indicators is to look to the ecological footprint per kilogram of product you produce and if you compare then for example uh, organic with conventional then you see that on some points indeed organic is better but a lot of other topics uh, conventional is doing better on uh, greenhouse gases, on biodiversity, on land use, on water use so less with more. 
I'm a big fan of peer review literature because I'm a professor as well as an MEP, but I do think we need to look very carefully into who's paying for the research and I think in terms of agricultural research there's an awful lot that's funded by agribusiness to find the sort of results that agribusiness wants. So by all means let's use science but let's be very informed about where that science is coming from and who's actually paying for those results. Okay. Um, another question is related to the conventional farming and uh, the yeah. organic farming. How can we can the EU prevent uh, the contamination by conventional mm -hmm. uh, farming mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the organic farms? Yeah. This is an absolutely crucial point because in order for something to be registered as organic and to get that premium price, we have to be able to guarantee to consumers that there's absolutely no pesticide residue there. But at the same time, if there's any contamination from neighboring farmers who are using pesticides, then those farmers at the moment can't sell that crop as organic. And we think that's absolutely wrong. We think that the polluter should pay. And so if it's a neighboring farmer who's actually contaminating that crop, either the farmer or the agribusiness that provided the pesticide should then compensate the farmer. That's absolutely essential because otherwise how can we agree that, that farmers can go ahead and convert to organic if they can't guarantee that premium product because they've done nothing wrong themselves? At least you say that at least there must be a kind of compensation to But the compensation farmers. must be paid by the person who's responsible for the pesticide. That's the so most the essential farmer. point. Either the conventional farmer or the person who provided the, the chemicals, the pesticides to that farmer. Mr. Kutema, do you agree with that? Um, I, I'm having a little bit more realistic and pragmatic approach in this. Uh, we should not look to the products. The products are safe. If it's conventional or organic, there's no doubt about it. Those rules are very, very strict. Um, but to indeed see the difference between an organic and conventional, we should look to the process, how it's produced. So have a process-based approach, not a product-based approach. Um, in the Netherlands you see that it's very dense populized and we have a lot of different farms um, uh, in, in the Netherlands. They can work very good together with it, with themselves. So if you do really product based you have a big problem uh, there. And uh, the polluter pays princip principle, yes, well, then maybe the organic farmers should pay the conventional farms as well for the water use, for the ecological footprint, like I already discussed, that they do much worse than conventional. So it's a non, it's a non, it's, it's a strange discussion uh, in that way and we should be fair on that and to look to the fixed figures again. So, and the, the last crucial question, um, does the current reform of uh, the organic regulation sufficiently address all mentioned above? I'm not convinced that the way the negotiations are going is really working in farmers' interests or consumers' interests at the moment. I mean, we're always concerned that there's a lot of lobbying that goes on at the Commission by agribusinesses and also they're lobbying their national governments and so they're influencing the, the third arm, which is what happens in the Council. And what we're trying to do as Greens who are uh, running the trilogues for the Parliament, we're trying to make sure that what comes out is the best for consumers so they can be sure that organic food doesn't have any pesticides in it and is safe and healthy and making sure that farmers can get the premium price for their product and that's what we're pushing for and we're going to resist whatever lobbying comes from ag agribusiness to loosen up these controls. Mr. Huitema, are you satisfied with the current results? Um, about lobby, yes, uh, we got a lot, a lot of lobby from both sides, so yeah. Um, but I tend not to listen to that lobby, it's just my very much my personal uh, opinion in this, that we should always keep room for maneuver for farmers, room for innovation, room for entrepreneurship, and we, if we have so tight legislation, then the farmer themselves cannot think anymore. So we think here in this house for the farmer. I think that's a wrong world and we should not, let, should not allow that. We should always have the motivation and the capacity of the farmer to think what is better on his farm. So, you have nothing else to add? Well, just to say, yeah, yeah. you know, we're, we're also, I'm sure we both want to support farmers. We want to see a thriving agricultural sector across Europe. And to me, that, that requires a movement towards more organic farming, which is better for nature. And we need to make sure that we get the regulations in place that will encourage the organic sector to meet the demand that's there and ensure farm livelihoods. Thank you both for, your, uh, for this very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you.